After studying quadratic equations, you will find that we have a lot of ways to solve the equations. For example, doing factorization, using the default program or formula in the calculator, as well as the quadratic formula. Next, we're going to see how these methods can be helping us to solve the equations which are reducible to quadratic equations. Here, the meaning of reducible means that an equation which can be changed or modified to be a quadratic equation, so that we've got some methods to solve them. Now let's take a look on example 1. You will see that the question carries a fraction with 3 over x in the third term. The trick in doing the question would be, we try to multiply x on both sides so as to make it a quadratic equation. So as a result, the question becomes 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. By factor method of factorization, you have got 2x, x, and it should be a plus 3 and minus 1 here. As a result, x will be equal to 1 over 2 or minus 3. In solving an equation which is reducible to a quadratic equation, you have to be alert that there may be a restriction on the answer of x. For example, in example one, you have to make sure that you have to make sure that x cannot be zero because it's a fraction, or else it comes to like three over zero, which is an error in the calculation. Now you check the answer. None of them is equal to zero, which means both of them can be answers. Let's finish the question example one. If you use the concept to move on to example two, you will see that the first fraction implies you that x cannot be one here, whereas the second one tells you that x squared minus one cannot be zero. By identity, it means that x plus one multiply x minus one cannot be zero. Afterward, that means now x cannot be minus one as well as x cannot be one. If you combine the two conditions in the first fraction and the second fraction, and you will see that x cannot be both, cannot be one and minus one as well. So these are the restrictions in example two when you are looking at the answer. But generally speaking, in solving an equation, our aim is to remove the fraction first. Afterward, then we try to, we try to um, make it a quadratic equation. That means in example two, so our first job will be we multiply x squared minus one on both sides. So this is our first step. Afterward, please note that because of identity, x squared minus one will be x plus one, x minus one as well. So as a result, when you simplify x squared minus one over x minus one, so it goes to x plus one here. Whereas the second one should be easier, so because the fraction or the denominator will be cancelled out with x squared minus 1, so it gives you minus 2 afterward. While on the right hand side it will be simpler, so it's just 3x squared minus 3 by simple expansion. And finally you've got, so if we move everything to the right hand side, so you have 3x squared minus x and minus 2 finally. Lastly, this one, suppose I use calculator, I should have got x is 1 or minus 2 over 3 respectively. Now you have to be alert because right now we just mentioned that x cannot be 1 and x cannot be minus 1 in this question because it is a fraction form. So as a result, the first answer x is 1 should be rejected in this situation. Finally, we only have one answer which is called x is minus 2 over 3. So this is the way how you turn question involving fraction into a quadratic equation which is solvable. So the only thing you have to alert will be you have to check the denominator to see in what values x cannot be, be taken. Next we come to equations with high degree and we are going to see how it can be turned to quadratic equations. For example, in example 3 you will see that it's about part 4 and part 2 in a pair whereas example 4 is even more terrible because it's involving part 7, part 1 and part 4. But anyway, let's start looking at the question. In order to solve an equation of high degree by quadratic method, we should look at the pair very carefully to see a square relation. For example, now you have power 4 and power 2 together. Do you observe that x to the power 4 is a square of x squared? If yes, then you've got the way to do it. 
So the technique will be you can let y another symbol to replace x squared, and you will see that y squared will be x to the power four. In this situation, you will see that oh, we successfully turn the equation to be two y squared minus seventeen y minus nine equals zero. So as a result, now you can solve it as a quadratic equation. By using your calculator, you should have got y will be nine or minus one over two. Next, you do remember that our aim is to find the value of x. So as a result, you have to change it into x square as your outcome, which is equal to nine or minus one over two. But be careful that x square should be not negative. So it can be only like zero. Or is a positive number. So as a result, this answer minus one over two should be rejected because it's not valid to to be a value of x squared. Finally, x will be three. Yes, there is a mistake. Be careful that there are two choices for x. One will be positive three, and the other one will be minus three. In order to get x squared to be a nine, and this is the outcome of the answer: x equal to plus or minus three. If you use this concept to move on to example four, you will be very puzzled because, well, you can see that they should they are now having x to the power seven, x and x to the power four, and now we have three、um, variables instead of a pair. This is the first question. Second question will be you will see that power seven and power four they are not in a pair of square, so there should be some problems or some techniques or tricks behind the question. So what is it? Yes, you will see that the, all the question carry x, x, and x here, even though they are in different power. So our first step to do or to solve the problem should be taking out the common factor first. Now you will be having x and then multiply to x, x to the power six, plus x, and also minus, uh, sixty-five x to the power three equal to zero. And now when you read the question again, it's very nice. Because now part six and part three they are in a pair of square, which means the question can be changed to quadratic. But before we go ahead, do remember that the first x carry an answer, which means x will be a zero for the first one. Whereas for the second one, we use the same technique to solve the problem. Now I prefer to put it in a proper order, writing as x to the x x to the part six minus sixty five x cubed and then plus x u zero. So towards the second part, and you will now let y to be x cubed, and then so as a result, y square will be x to the power six, which means the question changed to x y square minus sixty five y and plus x u zero, which is our quadratic form. By using calculator or whatever methods you've got, now you will having you will be having y to be a so what should it be x or one over x. So how about I put the answer on top, and next you have x cubed will be x or one over x. By making use of your calculator, you will be having x is two or one over two. Together with the first zero we have got in the beginning, so that's why in this question we have totally three answers. They are zero, one over two, and two respectively. So towards these two equations or two examples, you will see that. Basically, we are searching for a pair of a square relations of the variables in order to change a question of higher degree into a quadratic one. The next type will be equation with set form. That means it carries like square root sine or cube root, etc. So let's come to example six first. <clears throat> Now you will see that the question consists of square root x and x, and once again you will see that there are、uh, there is a relation of square between that. Which means the question should be starting from letting y to be the smaller one, which is called square root x, whereas y square will be x afterward. In this case, you will be having y plus three y, that should be y square plus three y, and then eighteen I move to the left hand side so that I make a quadratic equation in general form. After that, the question will be pretty easy because you can solve it very quickly. Like three will be uh is equal to three or minus six. After resuming to the original expression, y should be square root x equal to three or minus six. Once again, minus six should be rejected because square root x itself, it this one, uh, it should be non-negative as well. 
So it can be either like zero or positive number. And the next, finally, you should have having x to be a nine, so which is a three squared. Let's finish your question about example six. But one thing you have to be alert would be, because the question now care is talking about square root of x, so you have to make sure that x itself, because of the square root sign, so it can't be negative. So as a result, um, in case you have any answer which are negative in the outcome, you have to reject it it as well. The last type of equation which can be reducible to quadratic equation would be exponential equations and logarithm equations. Example x will demonstrate one of the idea. Now you will see that the question carries a 2 to the power 2x and 2 to the power x. So once again they are in a relation of a square. By using the same technique when you're dealing with set form or like power 4, power 6, power 8 etc. So we will let x to be the smaller one, so which means now letting uh, not x, y to be 2 to the power x. So you will see that y squared means 2 to the power x squared, and by index law is 2 to the power 2x. Afterward, you will see that the question now turns to y squared plus 2y. 24, I move to the left hand side at the same time. So now you've got our quadratic equation very successfully. By using your calculator, you will be having y to be minus 6 or 4, and then which means 2 to the power x will be equal to minus 6 or 4 directly. If you have a very good concept on exponential function, you will see that this minus 6 should be rejected because it's impossible to, have, to be having 2 to the power x is minus 6. If you're not that good about it, it doesn't matter. So we can still check log on both sides, and then uh, it should be log. 2 to the power x would be log minus 6 and then or equal to wait minus 6 or equal to log 4 respectively and then to this moment when you try your calculator you will see that log minus 6 is an error so which means you have to reject this answer meanwhile by the rule of log x can be moved in the front of log 2 and then as a result is x log 2 equal to log 4 finally by division and then you will see that it will be equal to 2. Division here means that you are having, having log 4 over log 2. By using calculator, you get a 2 as the final outcome. Wait, 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 let's hold on. Do you observe that actually we have an easier way to check for 2 to the power x is equal to 4? Yes. Actually, if you are smart enough or careful enough, you will see that 2 squared is a 4. So that's why the shortest way of this answer can be stopped here and writing as like x to be 2, finally, by rejecting minus 6. Lastly, we come to an equation of logarithm. So we are doing the same thing, letting y to be log x. And as a result, y squared will be log x squared. So you do remember that it should be bracket square for log x to avoid ambiguity. After that, you should have now y squared plus 2y minus 3 equals 0. And the next, by using the calculator program, you should have obtained y to be minus 3 or equal to 1. After you returning to x, that means log x is minus 3 or 1. And finally, you see whether you remember the rules of log. In order to remove the log from the left hand side from x, it should be turning to 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power 1 on the right hand side. So which means the first answer comes up would be 1 over 1000 or simply like 0 0.001 or finally will be equal to 10. So this is the end of the chapter about equation which is reducible to a quadratic one. Finally, so let's share a very quick way of the presentation. So if you're familiar with this kind of question, you will see that actually you can imagine that this is y squared, this is y in your mind, and you apply your calculator formula or whatever way to solve the equation. Which means actually you can skip all the steps about letting y to be blah blah blah, but you can directly write down the roots directly. For example, after you use the calculator program, you should have obtained the outcome should be minus 3 or equal to 1. And you know that the subject you're considering will be log x. So that's why you can just write directly log x is minus 3 or 1. 
and finally x will be 1 over 1000 as well as 10 in the answer. So if you feel comfortable to present your quadratic equation or solving equation in this way, so you try to use it and it saves you a lot of time.